My name's Tom, this is The Enthusiasm Project, and today I'm going to try and create a 3D print that will be a practical solution to a problem that I'm having with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, recently I've made quite a few videos about the Osmo Mobile 2, and I really, really like it. It's an awesome smartphone gimbal stabilizer that lets you get super smooth shots with your smartphone. It has all these super cool features like hyperlapses and motion time lapses and object tracking, and it's a really cool thing for $130, but, it has one really annoying issue, and I just got back from a three week trip where I traveled all over the place with this thing, and the issue is this. When the unit's not powered on, everything just kind of flops around, which seems not good for the actual device, and is really annoying when you're trying to put it in a bag or carry it for whatever reason. DJI did not include any kind of locking mechanism on this gimbal. So when it's powered off, everything is just loose. There's no way to lock these down. I've been looking at this for a while and I don't have a perfect solution and I'm not an expert designer or CAD user, but I was just kind of thinking of something that might solve this problem, which is right here where these two main pieces go together. I kind of thought that if I made something that would just clamp them together, that would really help this will still spin freely, and this will still spin freely, but if these two are stuck together, that alone is gonna make it a lot easier to put inside a bag, take out of a bag, and hopefully protect it a little bit so it doesn't get damaged. So that's what I'm gonna do today, is try and figure out a print that's gonna solve that problem. Now, even though I do quite a bit of 3D printing on this channel, I'm really not an expert. I'm definitely just a hobbyist. I have several 3D printers that I really, really like. I'm gonna use the Prusa Mark II for this one. Uh, but I'm definitely not a professional designer, so my first course of action was just to go on Thingiverse and see if I could find something that already solved this problem, but I didn't find any prints for this issue. Basically, what I'm imagining is a little clip, it kind of would look like the letter E, like a capital E, that just sort of fits in here, two pieces on the end, and then one that goes in the middle, and just clips in and locks these together. The first step is actually to grab a digital caliper to measure out the sizes that I need all the parts to be and all the spaces to be, so that way they can be as accurate as possible. And honestly, I'm just sort of fumbling my way through this, but I think that that's important because a lot of times when you watch 3D printing videos, the people are such experts <laughs> that it's a little bit intimidating, and I am totally not an expert, so maybe that would kind of help you if you have an idea for a 3D print or a 3D design to kind of tackle it and figure it out and sort of just brute force your way through it like I'm doing. So my first step is I'm just going to jump into Tinkercad and brute force my way into developing this design that I have in my head. And it should be relatively simple. So the first step is I'm just gonna create a solid object by dragging a box into the work plane. I'm going to focus on setting the height and the width of the box because those are the measurements I need. The length doesn't really matter right now. The width I need is 11 millimeters and the height is 21.3 millimeters. Those are measurements I got after measuring the Osmo with the calipers. Once I got that rectangle set up, I'm gonna bring in another box, but instead of a solid object, this one is going to be a hole, and I'm going to make that the size of the two arms. So I'm actually gonna need two of these. One of them is gonna need to be 10.7 millimeters wide, and the other is gonna be 8.7 millimeters wide, because the two arms on the Osmo are slightly different sizes. Their length doesn't really matter because they're just going to chop out chunks of that original block, and their height just needs to be taller than the original object, so that way it fully creates a new hole from top to bottom. Once I've got those placed, the distance between them is 12.7 millimeters. And I know that Tinkercad has a built-in ruler, but I always get a little confused with it. I'm an English major, I don't know what to say. So to quickly solve that problem, I just brought in another box-shaped hole and made that 12.7 millimeters wide and stuck it in between the other two that I already had. So there's three holes basically placed next to each other right now. One of them in the middle is 12.7. The two on the ends are the size of the Osmo arms that I need to hold. And once I have everything aligned, I can just get rid of that 12.7 millimeter one that I don't need. And now I know that the other two that I do need are the correct distance apart from one another. At this point, that's where the length 
can be adjusted on this. And I basically just shortened it up so that it's even on the top and the bottom. And that's pretty much it. The next step is to group them all together. So I have it as one object and then export the .stl file. Since I'm using the Prusa printer, I'm gonna be using the Prusa edition of Slicer to slice this, but it's pretty simple to slice. There's no rafts, there's no supports. I'm gonna use 20% infill because I think that's gonna be strong enough without going too crazy overboard. And that's pretty much it. The next step is to just slice it, send it to the printer and print it. So I'm actually pretty impressed. I only had to print this once. It took about 30 minutes to print, which is pretty quick. I'm happy with that. The quality is great. I use this translucent blue filament from 3D Solutech, which I just really, really like. I also have a roll of translucent green. I just think this filament looks super cool and I really like using it. And it has this really nice smooth kind of shiny texture to it. And this actually works really well. You can kind of see it's exactly what I designed in Tinkercad. One of these little ridges is wider than the other, which corresponds to the Osmo that has one arm wider than the other. It basically just clips on and then they get held in place nice and securely, which makes it really a lot easier to put in your camera bag. Again, this still rotates. This still rotates. I could create a whole bunch of different clamps, but that kind of does seem a little bit of overkill. This stops the biggest problem, which is this from happening in your camera bag. I think there's probably room for improvement. I could probably make these a little longer so that they actually go on the edge. And if I added like a ridge at the end, they could clip over these arms and make it a little more secure. But for now, for what I need, this works really well. And the fact that it printed so quickly is pretty awesome. The Osmo comes with its own case, which is really nice and durable, but it doesn't really fit very well in another bag, especially when you're traveling with a lot of stuff. So I got this bag off of Amazon, which is pretty inexpensive and the Osmo just fits right inside. And then this is pretty easy to fit in a camera bag or a shoulder bag or something like that if you need to transport. So I'll put a link to this down below if you're interested in that. I'll also put a link to the file on Thingiverse that I created, so feel free to print that, feel free to remix it, do your own thing if you have this specific problem that you need to solve. So that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope that was interesting. My main goal here was to find a practical use for 3D printing because that's one of my favorite things to do, but to also hopefully help show you that if you're not a CAD designer or an engineer, like I'm not those things, it still doesn't mean you can't participate in the world of 3D printing and design. There are ways, especially with simple shapes and simple prints like this, that you can create things that are really helpful, really useful, really unique, and it's a really fun and rewarding process. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure to do so, and I will see you guys next time.